This is John from kevofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at pointer arithmetic in C++. So I'm still thinking about how I'm going to organize the videos in this course, but I'm probably going to put this video after one on pointers and arrays. Uh, and if you have seen that video already, then you'll, you will have seen some of the stuff that we're going to do here. But um, whether you have or, or not, this, this stuff is worth going through a couple of times and I'm going to go through some stuff here that I haven't shown you in any other video in any case um, and it's it's important it's quite important stuff to know as well because you, you do use it I have used this in actual programs believe it or not so I've got here a um, I've got here an array yes yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely going to have to put this after the video on pointers and arrays let's create a pointer to the start of this array so I'm going to say string pointer p text equals text. So that, you'll hopefully remember, will now point at the first element in the array. And we could do C out, dereference the pointer. So thing pointed out by p text. And that's going to give us the first element in this five element array, which is going to be the string one. Let's just run this and check. So it says one. Um, I'm actually going to, I'm going to put the number of elements in here because I, I think I want it later on. So we've got five elements, one, two, three, four, five. So the number of items in the array we can specify there, although it's optional when you initialize an array like this. And actually, I'd like, I'd like to be able to use that number later. So I'm going to say int um, elements equals five. And I'm going to put this here, elements. Uh, now, a common thing to do is if you've got something like this, um, an int which you, you, or any value which you don't want to change in your program, you don't want it to ever change, because if, if we change this, now it wouldn't be the number of elements in the array anymore, then um, you can put const in front of it. And that means that I, I now can't change elements. So if I set elements equal to seven now, and I try to compile the program, uh, it would give me a compiler error. It just wouldn't compile, which is what I want. That's like a safety check to make the const make sure that this now can't change. It's also quite common if you've got a constant to put it all in capital letters. So let's say um, n strings, meaning number of strings. You could put an underscore there if you want, but this looks quite funky. So let's just use this and let's put that there. So we now we now know that that's fixed and it's the number of elements in this array. So um, so the program works. Uh, so um, one thing we can do here is um, we can do addition with pointers. We've seen this in the video on pointers and arrays. But if we incremented p text like this, p text, uh, if we add one to it, which we can do the shortest way is to say plus plus. We could say equals p text plus one. Let's do that first just to see it. And then let's do a c out on thing pointed to by c text handler and run this. Then we get two. So um, the, the shorthand way of doing that, again, we could do plus equals one. That would also work. Or we could just do plus plus. Um, or for that matter, we could do plus equals three. And then, uh, so it started pointing here, and we add one, two, and three. Now it's going to point at the, uh, at the string that says four. So we can add numbers to pointers, and that will move it forward, the number of blocks of memory corresponding to one unit, whatever one unit is. So in this case, it's appointed to a string. So it's going to move forward by one string. If it was appointed to a char, it would move forward by one by three chars in this case. In other words, three bytes forward because the char is one byte. Um, we can also, we can do subtraction as well quite happily. We can say p text negative equals um, two. So if we move forward three to four and then we go two back, one, two, 
we expect it to now be pointing at 2. Let's try that. So I'm going to run that and it says 2. We can uh, compare pointers as well. So um, we can say, uh, let's say string pointer p end equals and let's set it equal to the, let's set it to point at the last element in text. So text uh, end strings. And remember the number of, the, num the last element in the array will be at the position, which is the number of elements in the string minus one. So it's going to be at index four, not five. Uh, and that's because um, we start numbering at zero. So if we started numbering at 1, we'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the fifth element would be at 5, which is the number of strings in the array. But because we start at 0, we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have to subtract 1 from the number of elements in the array to get at the last element. And it's very, very important to remember that, especially since the compiler probably won't warn you if you put a stupid number in here by mistake. And it's a common source of errors in C++. Um, so now we've got a pointer to the end. We can compare these pointers. So as we saw in the uh, video, I think we saw this in the, in the video on um, arrays and pointers. But we can do stuff like this. While uh, p text is not equal to p end. We can say C out thing pointed to by P text endler and P text plus plus. If, if we do that, um, we're going to get, uh, whoops, let's just see, we've got an error here somewhere. Oh, yeah, I forgot to take the address of it. So yeah, that, that would actually give us the last element in the array, but we need the address of that element um, because this is a pointer. So let's just put the address symbol in there. And now we'll try that again. and Hopefully that will work. Uh, so we get now um, two, three, four. Well, this is a little bit confusing because um, uh, P text doesn't point to the beginning. Let's just do that. P text equals and Let's use this syntax again just to make it really clear and set that equal right to the start here. Now we're not going to output the last element here. We've got one, two, three, four. And the reason for that is when it actually gets to the last element, the loop stops here. If we wanted it to point to the last element, we could actually do this. And that would work. So let's run that. One, two, three, four, five. So um, Whatever you do, don't try to write the value here and don't read it either because it will be garbage. Reading it will give you garbage. Writing it will potentially screw up your operating system and you'll have to restart your computer or something in the worst case. Um, but as long as you remember that you mustn't read or write that, um, I mean, you mustn't read or write the value here. Nevertheless, you can point the pointer off the end of the array, which in this situation is quite useful. So you can point the pointer wherever you like, it's fine. It's not going to give you a warning or an error. Just remember that if it's pointing somewhere where you haven't allocated memory, then you mustn't start reading or writing that memory. But sometimes this is actually quite useful. We could we could also do pointer subtraction. We, we could, um, yeah, so if I do, um, let's say, uh, let's, let's do this again, set it back to the beginning. Okay, I'll put a comment in here, set p text back to start. So if we set it back to the start, then we could do um, p end negative p text. Now the result of this um, should be a pointer, but the pointer that would be the result of doing this wouldn't be any use to us it would point at some memory location, uh, like memory location five, I suppose, uh, because we're pointing this just off the end of the array and this points to the beginning. So the difference between the two will be one, two, three, four, five. And um, 
that's no use as a pointer. We'd have a pointer pointing to memory location five. There's nothing interesting in there. But we could do int uh, elements, let's say, equals. And let's output elements, CL elements. So if we subtract one pointer from another, we can store that in a um, in an integer. Whoops. I should have called that elements. Let's say elements. Except that it probably should really be long. Um, but in this case, um, I know that this is going to be a small number. So um, I can successfully do this. Uh, it could, uh, yeah, pointers, they're actually, if I remember rightly, they're actually um, like a long type. Um, more than in, so you, you could store really big numbers in them, um, I believe. Uh, and so maybe it make, makes a little bit more sense to do this. That makes it a little bit clearer what's happening. So we use a long because we're dealing with pointers. And also we'll put everything in brackets and cast to a long just to really just to make it clear what's, what's happening. Although um, it worked fine without that. And that's going to give us the number of elements, of course, in the array, because uh, the difference between the memory location of the first element and the memory location of the element after the end of the array is going to be five. So if, if we take this first pointer here and we add five to it, one, two, three, four, five, we get a pointer that's just off the edge of the array. So in other words, if we subtract end from start, yeah, we're going to get the number of elements in the array. I think that's all I, I want to cover in this tutorial. Well, there's one more little thing which is going to come in useful a bit later on, uh, which, which is that suppose we want a pointer to the middle of the array. We could do something like, um, let's set ptext back to the start. And then Let's say p text plus equals. We'll do p text plus equals n strings divide by two. And then let's do c out of p texts. So c out p texts. Well, this is going to give us, well, let's take a look. Um, it's going to give us a memory location because I forgot to put the, I forgot to dereference the pointer with a star. Let's do this again. So we're getting three. So we've got the, the middle of the array. So what's happened is um, we've done n strings divide by two because we're doing integer division. It discards the remainder. So the answer to that, five divided by two, because they're both integers, we're just going to get um, two we're going to discard the remainder. It's not going to be 2.5, just 2. And then when we add 2 to p text, so p text is there, 1, 2, we get the middle element in the array. Uh, and this kind of thing, or either this or something very similar, uh, is going to be very useful in an exercise which I'm going to give you in a future tutorial. So um, I will give you an exercise that will help you with this later on. But um, just for the moment, uh, if you have the uh, motivation and energy, it's definitely very worthwhile just to practice this a little bit. Declare a pointer to an array and practice going backwards and forwards in the array. So practice addition with pointers, practice subtraction, practice comparing pointers. Um, just make up some example for yourself and check that it works as you expect. And uh, see what happens when you subtract pointers, get the result in an int. And if you do that, to make it really worthwhile, think about everything carefully, as I've done as I've gone through this tutorial, and make sure everything's exactly what you, what you expect. Probably will catch you out um, the first time you do this. You'll probably get something unexpected. But if you think carefully about why you've got the result that you have, you should be able to figure it out. So it's a bit of a puzzle there. But just make up your own examples, just like I've done here, and go through each of those different possible cases and also see, uh, check that you can get a pointer to the middle of an array as well. That'll give you a really good workout 
with pointer arithmetic. So that's it for this tutorial and until next time, happy coding. Thank you.